Welcome back to Entrendia's. The fundamentals of Verizon seem negative as customer churn in all main services and products are up. Wireless retail churn, especially for prepaid, where the customer pays in advance, has a churn rate of 4%. It is good to see the postpaid churn rate is lower than the prepaid, as postpaid, where the customer uses the service first, then pays respective to their usage, returns higher revenue for telecom companies. Nonetheless, churn is high, and this churn could continue because of the Amazon Dish partnership, where Amazon Prime subscribers are offered $25 per month unlimited talk text, also known as the Boost Infinite Unlimited SIM Kit. Amazon Prime users now have the opportunity to get 20% off the list price. On top of that, a $25 bill credit toward their first month. Then the SIM kit is shipped to the customer for free. This partnership can cause pressures for competitors like AT&T and Verizon to lower their service prices to stay relevant and further increase this Verizon churn. Verizon faces increasing current debt on their balance sheet at $51 billion when total cash only is at 4.9. However, it is important to keep in mind that a large addition of this debt was from 2021 COVID interest rates were low back then, when the goal is to expand their 5G network. This is Verizon's big bet, fast 5G to get people on board with their services, but 5G is quite immature thus far and will need further installation and development. Verizon's current high debt increases the severity of the toxic lead cables. Verizon may face $8 billion in removal and cleaning costs, adding more debt to the books. Has the market priced this in? The stock is down 38% year over year and down 11% since the Wall Street Journal toxic lead article. To fund this cleanup, could we see more stock dilution? We see stock dilution occur in Verizon past, and this event may cause dilution once again. Verizon does have free cash flow of $5.6 billion in their most recent quarter earnings, clearly not enough compared to the $8 billion estimate for the cleanup, though this cost will most likely be spread instead of a one-time. This does not include the potential fines in lawsuits, only adding damage to Verizon. With all this going down, we do see Verizon trading at lower valuations compared to its competitors. We see Verizon lower than the peer average in price to book, price to sales, and price to earnings. Moreover, we can see these valuation metrics degrade over time for Verizon as the market is just not excited about VZ stock. Even though we are seeing a bullish divergence in the stock based on my last video, it is not a stock that I am quite excited about for the long term in an environment where you can collect 5% on a CD within 12 months and call it a day. If you do own large position in Verizon, consider selling covered calls to collect premium and cushion potential further losses. As macro trends seem bearish for a recession, Verizon stock could go lower because of external factors instead of telecommunication rivals and Verizon churn issue. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen in this episode today. If you did, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Comment down below what you think will happen to Verizon. And I will see you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.